I'm pushing really hard to have Project Cream Puff done running and driving in like the next month. Uh, we're actually in the middle of moving, so uh, I can't have the car in the driveway like I have, uh, like I've had it in, in the driveway. I've worked on it for a while, so I'm working on the garage. It's a little cramped in here because we've got a bunch more junk in here as we're trying to, you know, clean up the house and, and have it ready to sell. But today, what I'm going to be doing is tearing off the entire Levin front end because I got some welding I need to do. You see, the car is missing some things, like a big piece of the upper radiator mount is obviously not there. The lower mounts for the radiator are also both missing on both sides. There's that side and there's the other one. As well as there's no battery tray in here. Originally thought, ah, no big deal. I'll make some new radiator mounts. I'll relocate the battery to the trunk and then I'll get a new piece to go up top for the upper radiator support. But I came down to and realized that I just couldn't find a battery location kit that I liked for uh, for an A86, especially something that's gonna be a car. So what I ended up doing is, uh, from the old parts car I had that I chopped up, you know, a while ago, I still had some of the front end parts. So, I was able to salvage the battery tray and the lower radiator mounts from that front end on that car. And a while back, I picked up a brand new upper radiator support from flows.ie. So, flows hooked it up, I was able to get this, a brand new part, and then I've got the old parts to weld into the car. I guess, now with the limited space I've got, uh, let's go ahead and start taking stuff off of the car. Well, the mounts in place based off of where it looked like they were and put the radiator in realized that I needed to do something. When you're doing things like this where you're adjusting mounting and trying to figure out where things go, especially with a heat exchanger like a radiator intercooler, it's a good idea to cut some cardboard pieces to protect the front and the back, the fins, and, and, and protect um, everything from getting damaged. So I'm going to take the old box from the radiator, we're going to cut it down to size and then tape it onto the radiator to protect everything so it doesn't get dinged up when we're, when we're doing all this. All right, let's find out if, uh, if I got this lined up correctly for the radiator mounts. We've got these sweet JSP Fab upper radiator mount brackets here. Just a beautiful little touch to getting the radiator bolted in real nicely. That's looking pretty good. It, uh, it definitely clears the hood. Perfect, okay. I think that that is acceptable to me. I'm gonna finish, I'm gonna finish welding the, the lower mounts in and then we'll get the, uh, the battery tray welded in. This was a lot of welding rusty, junky metal to uh, rusty junky metal it definitely isn't the prettiest job we've definitely got some boogers like right there but it's solid now um, and I'm gonna redo all this again later because this whole this whole lower support is pretty jacked up so I plan on building a whole new lower support I've done that before in my other cars uh, I just I don't have the time to do it right now because well I've only got uh, like a month to get this car running and driving because I got to move across the country. So this is what it is for now. And to mount the radiator into those brackets, uh, Battle Garage has new uh, radiator bushings, which is pretty neat because all the ones I've had are all like deteriorated and disgusting. And so these are some brand new high quality ones to, uh, to go in there. To get the battery tray in here, 
Um, it's going to take a little bit of finessing. I feel like it's supposed to go right about here, uh, but I need to grind the paint off of here so I can weld. I've already got the paint ground off of this. So what we're going to use, since this is, in, since this is kind of in a tight space, we're going to use this to uh, grind the paint. This is like a, I call it like a finger grinder or a finger sander. And this allows you to get into tight spaces to go grind things down and sand things down. I've got the radiator mounts welded in and I've got the battery tray welded in. Next up is the upper radiator support. I've already removed one side, already drilled it out and pulled it off. And now I need to do the other side. So I'm gonna show you how that works since I've got it all figured out on the one and we'll do the other side and I'll show you all the stuff to drill out and things to look for. Sheet metal body panels are typically held together with what are called spot welds or pinch welds. And that's what you can see right here, this dimple. What it is, it's a welder that goes, that clamps together and it clamps together in two pieces of metal and welds it together without any filler. So there are a bunch of these that hold it actually onto the chassis. And I'm gonna show you how to drill these guys out, at least how to locate them and then remove them. Now what you're looking for are little pieces of dimpled metal, like what you've got right here and right here. There's gonna be two on the front side. There's all gonna be some on the back side over here. You just kinda of gotta look for where Toyota put them. I'm marking all of them. A lot of times I just feel along with my fingers until, until I find the dimple. And then what's not shown, there's gonna be a couple underneath the fender. I gotta pull the fender to get to those. Now what I do is take this little spring-loaded center punch and I go right in the middle of the dimple. I'm gonna make a center punch so I know where to drill it out at. With those spot welds marked, there's a couple of different ways to remove them. You can use a drill, which is just a regular drill bit, or a, uh, they actually make a specific um, spot weld drill bit. I'm just gonna drill it all the way out. The other option is use something like this. This is a finger sander um, or finger grinder, what are you gonna call it? It's just got a little, little strip of sandpaper. Uh, it's not very wide, this works pretty well, so you, that way you can drill through the weld and the first layer of sheet metal and not drill all the way through the second layer of sheet metal. Now, because, because I've decided I'm gonna make this a bolt-on thing, I don't mind drilling all the way through. Um, the other option is if you do drill all the way through, you can use like a, like a welding spoon, just like a copper spoon, and, and actually plug weld the whole thing and weld the two pieces together in that same spot. So that, that's, that's an option you have, but for me, I'm just gonna just drill it all the way out, and then we'll see how it all fits together and how I can make it work uh, the best. I'm gonna start by drilling a pilot hole with the eighth-inch drill bit. Then we're gonna step up the size to a quarter inch drill bit to drill out the spot weld. And depending on how centered you are here, you might actually have to wallow out the holes a little bit or grab in the next size up drill bit. Sometimes to get the spot welds to separate, you've got to use something like this, which is like a, it's a special kind of body chisel that you use to hammer in, oops, to separate the spot welds. Just like that. Get the top ones off. We've got the backside ones now. We've got to try and get the front side ones. There are also a few more, one here on the front and two up on top, but to get to those, we gotta pull the fender. Okay, with the fender removed, we can see that I've got a spot weld here, and then I might have another one up in the top, but I won't be able to know until I get, uh, there's some stitch welding, gotta grind that out. Okay, I ground down the stitch welding on each of the spots using my, my finger grinder. 
And the last spot weld seems to be right here. Once you're at this stage, this is when you gotta decide what you wanna do as far as welding versus bolt-on. So welding is pretty straightforward. What you're gonna do is you're gonna plug weld every single spot that you drilled out. But if you're gonna bolt-on, you're gonna take a different approach. Before you weld or bolt-on, it's pretty easy to get this thing lined up because the front bolt for the fender on both sides can be used to position and center the piece before you start welding, before you start drilling to bolt it on. This spot right here is what I mean. You get this on here, get it set up kind of on both sides, and then you can get it centered for the bolt. And just do hand tight for now, because you're gonna hand tighten both sides. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna adjust this left and right until it matches up on both sides. Right now I'm a little too far um, to this side. So we're just gonna shift it over a little bit. That looks pretty centered. There's just a little bit of a gap between the bolt and the hole. And that is, I think, centered, at least for this car. So now we can go ahead and tighten it on down. To bolt it on, I'm gonna wanna bolt it on right here in this hole. Uh, that way I can have a good spot on the side and kind of on the front to hold it in place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that so I know where to drill my hole at. And we'll mark on the same spot on the other side of the car. We now have a full bolt-on upper radiator support. What I did was here is the fender bolt, right? So we got that. And then where there was the spot weld up in front, we got that. And then right here, I added a nut and bolt. And then next I've got one here and one here. Now this one is actually the same spot as the Levin uh, headlight bracket. So I made that mount bolt in through the upper radiator support. So we've got three pieces of metal sandwiched in. And we got the same thing over the other side, right here, right here, right here, right here, and right here. There we go. Well, that's all done. Yay. Just gotta say, man, I did a pretty dang good job if I do say so myself. This, this looks like it could be OEM and everything with how I drilled it. And the radiator's mounted real nice. And dang, dude, just... I did a really good job. I, I feel really good about myself. It's not often that I feel really good about a job, to be honest. And but I feel really good, really good about how that turned out. Okay, um, let's put the grill and the corner lights on. Mm. All right, man. That just looks so good. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad I was able to get all this stuff welded in, and bolted in, radiators in, battery trays in. I even welded in new seat mounts for the driver's seat because I don't know what it is, but it's every A86 I've ever owned, and even ones my friends have owned, I've had to weld uh, the seat mounts back in for the, the two rear mounts for the driver's seat. I don't know why they always break, uh, the welds break or they blow through the floor. So I had to fix those, I got that fixed up. I'm happy about this progress. Um, I guess that's where we'll stop for now since we've got all that stuff bolted back in and uh, radiators in. Now it's just a matter of fuel lines, fuel pump, fuel pressure regulator, throttle cable, and some other little things to get it running. This is just, oh man, this is just getting so freaking close. So uh, yeah, make sure to follow along, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, hopefully the next couple of videos we'll have it uh, running and driving.